What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 2.8 of Griffith's 4th edition. The problem reads, Use your result in problem 2.7 to find the field inside and outside a solid sphere of radius R that carries a uniform volume charge density rho. Express your answers in terms of the total charge of the sphere Q and draw the graph of the magnitude of E as a function of the distance from the center. Now, as you recall, in problem in problem uh, 2.7 of our of our textbook that for a shell spherical shell of radius r the electric field inside is zero and for points outside the sphere this is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q interior divided by r squared r hat. So what do we mean by q interior? So when you say q interior, because remember here, we are talking about points outside the sphere. So if you have a point outside the sphere, that that is r away from the center of the sphere okay all points that is equidistant with this point of uh, the center wherein you're going to you know produce a sphere of radius small r okay i hope you can imagine that okay all the, the all the points within that spheric imaginary spherical shell will have an uh, electric field equal to this, and the Q interior here would be the the charge that is inside this imaginary sphere. So in that case, if this is a, has a total charge Q, so electric field outside will be equal to one over four pi epsilon naught times Q over R squared, R hat. Okay, so remember this is your, uh, this is a vector. Okay, now, if we're going to use that in our problem, okay, so let's choose first all points outside the sphere. So for points, outside the solid sphere okay so let's say this is your solid sphere okay and this is your point outside and then this is the let's say r this is the center this is your point okay now because this is a solid sphere this solid sphere uh, is composed of an infinitely number of shells, right? Yeah, so that means uh, we can superimpose the electric field, so the elect total electric field inside uh, outside will just be the sum of the electric field due to the each shell, okay? For for uh, let's say for one, so let's say n, where n is equal to one to infinity. Okay, so that means this is equal to the sum of this electric field, which is one over four pi epsilon naught q interior for each n shell divided by r. Remember, r would still be the same. R hat. The n equal to one to infinity. So this is uh, because r would still be the same. So this becomes 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 over r times sum of all the q interior 
for all n equal to 1 to infinity. And what is this? Okay, if we take the sum of the charges of all the shells uh, that, comp that, that, that comprises this solid sphere, we end up with the total charge of the sphere. So in other words, the electric field inside will just be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon q over r squared, r hat. So as you will notice here that uh, even if you do not have a point charge, a solid sphere will, and even a shell, will behave as if it is a, there is a, uh, the, the, the total charge is concentrated at the center of the sphere. Okay? Now, how about for the outside? Okay, for outside, the sphere... Okay, so here we're going to look at a point inside. This is R. So just like this one, this will comprise a imaginary sphere. Okay, and then the electric field that is inside this imaginary sphere, okay, is also composed of infinite number of shells. But this infinite number of shells is less than the number of shells for that comprises this uh, this uh, big solid sphere or the whole solid sphere. Okay, so instead of getting the total charge of the total sphere, we're just going to calculate the interior. So first, let's compute for the Q interior, interior to this, uh, sorry, for this, is, uh, this should be inside. Sorry about that. Okay. So the ratio between the charge interior to this sphere to the volume interior to the sphere will just be equal to your density because your density is uniform. And this is also equal to the total charge of the sphere divided by the total volume. So in other words, the Q internal internal to this small sphere or smaller sphere will just be equal to the uh, volume interior divided by the total volume times Q. So volume interior would be 4 thirds pi R squared. So remember this is R and this is divided by 4 pi R cube. No, this is R cube, sorry. It should be R cube. Where R cube would be the where capital R would be the radius of your sphere. So therefore, Q interior or the charge interior to this smaller sphere inside this big sphere will be equal to small r cube divided by big r cube times Q. And we're going to plug it here. So this becomes 1 over 4 pi. So this is E. This is outside. This is inside. Interior. This is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q interior divided by R squared R hat. Okay, so plugging it Q interior here will end up with this result. This is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r cube r r hat. Now, so you will notice here that uh, both functions, uh, both electric fields are functions of r, but the relationship is different. If we're going to graph the magnitude of E, so this is E, as a function of the distance from the center. This is your center. As you will notice that, there is a boundary. The boundary would be the edge or the surface of your solid sphere. It's called this is your R. When R is equal to R, okay, even if you plug it here or here, you will end up with the same value. So when R is equal to R, we, let's call it E naught, 
this is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 over r squared. And this is a constant. And it's the same even if you use this expression or use this expression. So if we're going to graph it here, so it should be somewhere here. Okay. Now, what happens now if you have points before uh, inside? Remember, this is inside and this is outside. So from here, you can notice that this is E in and it varies linearly with R. When R is 0, the electric field inside would be 0. Okay, so the graph inside would be a linear graph, increasing. However, outside the sphere, you will see that the charge, remember Q is constant, so the electric field would decay uh, by 1 over R squared. So it would look something like this. Okay, so that is how the electric field varies for a solid sphere, inside and outside the sphere. Okay. So as I, repeat, I repeat, inside the sphere, the electric field increases linearly from zero to your maximum electric field at the surface, which is E naught. Then after which it will start to decay because you go farther from your charge. Okay, very simple, right? So that's it. That's the solution to problem 2.8. I hope you learned something today and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.